Ladies and Germans, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. Hello, 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 and I'm Rangru. And again, guys, here's some more Steel Division Normandy 44. This terrible twosome is coming to you today from Comment Le Avant. Rangru, tell us about the combatants. Well, on the left-hand side, playing as the second Indian head division, we got Agnello, or Agnello, whatever. And on the right-hand side, playing as the 716 Infantry Division of all things, we have Enjo. Okay, you said the 716th of all things. What? Why did you say that? What's what's well, so different about this? Well, Khan, have you really ever casted a 1v1 and sure 716? I've hardly seen any like 1v1 matches where 716 are played at all. It's usually when a person picks a German infantry division, it's always the 352nd. That's true, that's true. And if not then, then you go for the high mobility of the 91st. Or 17th SS. Even more, even more true, it's either mechanized to Kalor or lots and lots of artillery. So tell mm -hmm. me about the 716th then. What is their, what's their claim to fame? So the 716th have, they're, they're a bit awkward. They have some pretty decent A phase, and as you can see, there's a huge amount of money early on. 100 points, you can buy a lot. They got, as you can see up top, they got a Panzer B2, which is a French uh, World War II heavy tank, the Char B1, whatever. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. a really good tank, actually, considering it's a, it's a light tank, it has the same armor as a Panzer IV. It's great at infantry support because it has a howitzer that can shoot stuff from 1.2 kilometers. Oh, I think it's one kilometer. I'm not entirely sure. I see when oh, I no, we, it's, it's one flat, but that's not a problem. Continue. What else have we got? Uh, a lot of artillery, and a lot of very powerful artillery, mortar, heavy mortars and heavy howitzers. A lot of decent spam infantry, and later on in the B phase they got Italian free troops, which are kind of like 2.0 grenadiers, uh, a bit better. Artillery, a uh, pretty decent amount of static weaponry overall. It's, it's an interesting division. I don't think it's one of the better divisions as they really lack into the later game and even though they have a good A-phase economy, they just don't have the best infantry to really take advantage of it. It comes down to using their static weaponry effectively and I find because of that, they are shooting much better in open ground engagements compared to close forest fighting. But how will that match up against the 2nd India head? So at the same time, uh, the 2nd Infantry mm -hmm. is very underpowered, it looks like, in terms of economy. But mm -hmm. you know all of those forwards are packing some very, very good GIs. Oh yeah, those rangers are going to be scary, especially considering we got rangers of soot, we have the flamethrowers. Mm -hmm. And guess who's going to win that forest, Khan? Uh, it's definitely going to be the guys in blue. Light a little fire in your hearts indeed. Uh, what are we thinking right now about the dispositions? It looks like, at least from my perspective, on the Allies' side, we just have a very much a standing kind of static fo uh, force in the upper left-hand side. It looks like yep. there's a lot of pressure for that force. What's your read on the situation? Yeah, he's pro uh, you can actually see right now the match started for oh, the wow. American. That's just a supremely, supremely um, cautious deployment coming out of the second India head. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's pretty much just going to be defending the north-hand side with some machine guns and that all... But and even look at the southern gun. side as well. You want to take a look at the so south? I think the thing moving furthest up is one of his machine guns? No, it is actually going to be... Oh yeah, it's pretty... I, I see what you mean. It's very conservative. Conservative. He's not going to be rushing into the top midtown, which is rather interesting because that's usually a good place to go. I'm thinking he's just very concerned about capping out forest first and then mm -hmm. leaping up from there instead of going all too crazy. Which isn't such a bad idea considering he is economically stinted compared to Enzo. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at Enzo, he's sending quite a bit decent forces all around. I think it's going to be down to making a breakthrough up north and try and use his long range advantage. And I just want to double check. Yeah, the uh, Panzer Char does have one kilometer range of the Howitzer, but that's it still does. pretty good. And also considering it also has a cannon, it does two HTS, 11 HT in total, which isn't too bad. Very true. And actually, one thing I have to kind of uh, applaud slightly is this positioning mm -hmm. of the mortar on the southern side. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, if you're looking at it initially, your first your first inclination might be, oh my gosh, it's right out in the open. But if you really look at it, it's right in that tip. He's going to have a recon guy right in front of it. And frankly, mm -hmm. any kind of usage of this um, anti-tank gun could be very well placed. Yeah, it's, it is placing the mortar yeah, is the IG-18, the support howitzer. But in that mm -hmm. position, though, mm -hmm. you are correct because open ground... It's a choke point, so you can easily cover that. And he doesn't have to worry about it too much. Right? Could, Mr. Angelo could bring out Sherman, but 
as we see right now, it's just AT guns and infantry, so the IG-18 will be having a damn good time. I, I have to say, I'm a little surprised by seeing this 76mm so early. Um, it will definitely clog up the north if this B2 Ooh, gets yeah. any kind of frisky, but couldn't, couldn't there be a better position for it? Maybe either a little bit further towards the front, or maybe kind of shifting over to the American left? Yeah, it's definitely a very conservative, especially considering that he has a better forest Ooh, on top of him. There goes the B2. Oh, that's the oh, first damn. kill of the game. Jeez, that's a shame. Yeah, that's just quite a saying. That's a rather expensive tank to lose, not just in terms of points, really, mm -hmm. but also you can only get two of them in A phase, so... It is worth noting, cool. though, that the Germans are already up 56-44, and they're kind of starting to take oh, over yeah. those tickets. Uh, they do have that forest down below, and they're pushing quite hard. Not for too long, though, because those rangers are starting to get frisky. But as you can see, just completely taking the town up top, completely taking the no-man's uh, cell diary up. Yeah, that's a lot of free ground. Yeah, it's Ant Antonello just gave to Enjo. Right, yeah. And one thing I'm, I have to say I'm a little bit happy to see is that, first of all, it's not just both guys slamming into each other. I understand that very often mm -hmm. this initial phase of the game is kind of like quick, seize as much territory as possible. Yep, yep. Do you see this tentative, this kind of caution play? Is that because of the nature of these divisions, or, or what do you think? I think Adzanello would need to be much more aggressive down south. He has range of marauders and assaults, which are deadly against grenadiers. Those grenadiers only have run self machine guns. Uh, well, not sure if you noticed, by the way, we did see a jeep oh, go on down. At the, was that the IG? Yes, the IG put one shot down and just blew away that recount. Oh, yeah, so not see. a massive victory, but at the same time, at least worth noting, <laughs> the Germans are on the board in terms of kills. Mm -hmm. But no, we are seeing... I'm sorry, go for it. But yeah, just, he just needs to be much more aggressive, Adjanello. He's really just being very defensive. Also, he has range support that he could possibly use. And at long range, they will beat out the Grenadiers. He has a lot of nice tools available for him to take advantage of. And as you can see, our IG is just once again almost killing a six-pounder. And I, I know this is a silly thing, perhaps. If you look at the recon mm -hmm. troop down the south in that windmill, it reminds me very much of the Call of Duty 2, way back in the old school days. Oh, yeah, that windmill. I do I do love that windmill a lot. Uh, it's, it's a good-looking windmill, you got to admit. 10 out of 10. That's true. That's true. Very calm, very peaceful. I hope it gets mm -hmm. blown up. <laughs> oh, but jeez. It does look okay. like Enzo is deploying a little bit more further to the north. and it, he's. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's just uh, begging for the Americans to come to him or not, but it doesn't look like he has to be too aggressive with this at all. Yeah, I think he doesn't want to overextend himself too much because he has a good amount of forces, but it's all rather slow infantry. He's using the bike recon unit, which is very interesting. I don't particularly think it's a good unit to bring, but well, it's still alive, so he got that going for him. I, th I think that might be only because the 57mm can't quite see him. Yeah. But speaking of recon, let's switch real quick over into the allies. There's so a good Agnello, and he sees very, very little. He does know there's an MG34 mm -hmm. in the middle part of the map, as well as some Ostruppen. But um, I can't help but wonder if the recon units for him are extremely out of position. Sure. Even these Ranger Marauders seem to be hiding in the trees. Yeah, they can. See those are the ones I believe that's put on the MG34 and whatnot, but. Up top, he doesn't really have much recon during any spotting. And, of course, all the way down south, not exactly much either. It's, it's really just those range of marauders, actually. Enzo, by the way, let's go over to his side real quick. He just sees a lot more. He actually does see this coming under some firepower from indirect. Mm -hmm. And, oh my gosh, it looks like the uh, poor recce troops down in the south got taken on out. There's Fusiliers now in that windmill. Oh, yeah. So they have tilted and lost. And looks like, yep, there's just that IG-18 is going to take hits from the 81mm yeah. stovepipe. Oh, I, I, you know, Khan, that's just the rate of wind blows. That is true. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we finally got some mortars here from Agenello, which definitely a good idea. Second Infantry's main advantage is a stupid amount of artillery that they can get. But I, I'm, he just needs to move his infantry unit in that forest just, just a little bit south, and he can clear that out easy peasy like. It's very true. Actually, I'm a little bit concerned. Um, you do see it look up on the, the northeastern side of the map. North central, northeastern central, whatever. Yep. We've got some LEFHs, 1419s out on the map, but mm -hmm. are they a little bit too far back? If you check out their range, I'm seeing practically yeah, dropping rounds on the, on the front far. lines. If he could bring them up to the town, that would probably be ideal. He's still going to have a lot of good cover here, too. But it's definitely being very cautious. Reveals artillery guns. Stoke pipe, by the way. Jeez, pinned down again. That IG-18 is just doing work. Yeah, he's doing God's work, and because there's no real tank or other support, or, well, I said the mortars to blow him up, but as you see, the mortars getting blown up already. Just good positioning, good good choice of units here. 
It's good to see actually we are finally going to, are going to see some action going on between these infantry forces in the mm -hmm. forest for one. So expect to see fire and flames coming on out. Looks like some rangers in the bottom part of the map as well are coming on up with that flamethrower, but they're mm -hmm. just a hair far away from that windmill, and I think the fusiliers might actually even be able to push them back. Yeah, for now, and also the IG-18 is definitely helping out quite a bit of stopping the infantry from getting too close, and those fusiliers are rather resilient. I mean, for recon squad, there's nine of them. Bloody nine of them. Very That's... true. Very true. In the force, in the meantime, though, just to the uh, northeast, we are going to see the uh, rangers are starting to move in, take mm -hmm. out the... the uh, Führer that was in the middle of that forest, and I have to say, I don't like the, the chances for the Germans anymore in the south. No, it's not looking too good. The mortars now back up, up on, on the line, as you can see. Uh, LG-18, or IG-18, is about to go down, and once that's down, there's going to be a slow move, but Edsonello should be able to take back the southern flank. Uh, but he has brought in some more um, LEFHs, and mm -hmm. I think these guys are going to start to lay rounds down the forest. And at least, oh my god, this is terrifying. 14 HE out of a phase yeah. A. That's 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 pretty tight. So the thing about 716 that makes what I find very interesting is all their artillery is extremely high powered. Like you've got 14 HE at 80 point, that's a pretty damn good deal. Mm -hmm. Their big problem, yo, when it comes to artillery, is it's all very short range. The farthest range artillery they get is 1.6 kilometers, as you can see. So even though they're very powerful, it's risky having to bring them up close to be able to dismount that power. And they can get counter artillery rather easily because you can't exactly counter artillery if they're out of range. Very, very true. And look, the IG-18 does go down. That mm -hmm. pack also got taken on out. And it looks like the Germans are folding in the southern side of this map. But I think I did see, maybe I want to check for me as well. Yep, we have a Panzer B2 moving on forward. Yep, and that's going down south to try and shore things up front again. There's no AT gun at the moment, so should be pretty safe for him. But there's a six pounder a little bit in the mid, but it's a bit too far away. That's true. The only other one I can see right there are those uh, rangers, and, and the forests are now completely American, so you seem to have proven mm -hmm. rather uh, prophetic about this. We are going to see the Americans do have now 48% to 52, not mm -hmm. quite getting back across that 50 yard line there, but. Um, uh, well, not quite back across that 50 yard line. Let's just stick, yeah. keep with that. Yeah, I, I still think he could have been much more aggressive and captured that forest sooner and he'd be in a better position. Fortunately, because as you look economy rise, he will be in the economy lead by B and C, and that's where 2nd Infantry gets a lot of the artillery, a decent amount of infantry and other units that can help him break through because Enzo doesn't exactly have the best late game compared to Aginello. And that's what I was going to ask you. We're going to phase B in just about 20 mm -hmm. seconds here, and it's been minimal combat so far. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Especially, like you said before, you usually see everyone just class together and fight real hard. This has been very small skirmishes from both sides. Both players being very timid when it comes to attacking, especially because both are pretty decent A-phase decks. That's true. Actually, I, I, I would say at the same time, though, I can't help but feel it's almost appropriate. Well, isn't the A-phase mm -hmm. supposed to be kind of reconnaissance, B sort of engagement, <laughs> and... Sees that knockout punch, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess from a thematic standpoint, you are correct, yeah. But especially because I've seen a lot of replays of Second Infantry. They were very popular like a few months ago. Zukadim was doing really good at Second Infantry because Rangers are stupidly bloody good. And mm -hmm. you can get a lot of them and they, they kill everything. They, they kill everything because they have high veterancy. Adzanello's using a lot of rifles in A phase, which is quite quite interesting it's not it's not a bad choice it's just a different choice i was going to say those guys are fairly cheap though aren't they i mean we're not yeah. exactly talking us troop and levels but they're still pretty no. darn cheap yeah they're pretty cheap uh the main advantage is semi-automatic rifles of course their bar machine guns aren't exactly the greatest but calling the bar machine guns a little bit of a stretch to be honest but they're mm. cheap they're spammable and yeah they, they kind of fill in the same role as 15 scotch rifles now, I'm going to get into another area in just a second, but I do want mm -hmm. to drop a little bit of trivia. I, I don't know. I'm sure you know this. I mean, you work with World War II material in your, in your uh, yep. let's call it real world job. <laughs> but did you know that the bar itself was actually originally invented back for World War One? Yep. And the Americans was... were afraid to use it. Oh, yeah. It took them um, a while. I forgot the reason why. They were it because, didn't terrified about ammunition. Well, it wasn't it wasn't ammunition. Actually, we were terrified something fall in the German hands. And they thought that the oh, portability yeah. would actually allow the Germans <laughs> to take a decisive advantage in the West. <laughs> I, I remember reading about it. Yeah, it's rather crazy. Eventually, of course, 
they did end up using it. I mean, you can tell from the historic game Battlefield Run, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. um, Always kind of yep. fascinating, though. Just you yeah. think about the history behind some of these weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, and just before, we are going to have some more artillery fire coming on out, but one thing I wanted to ask you, and it looks like our first is an excellent time for a lead-in, P-47 right. coming on in, dropping off bombs. What are we talking Ooh. about now for the 716th in terms of air power? Wow. Uh, pretty pants. The, uh, it's a pretty good hit yeah, all around, but 2nd Infantry gets some lovely planes. P-47s are, are fantastic because they're pretty fast. Very mm -hmm. fast, actually. 665 kilometers for bomber. Uh, and uh, they're just damn good planes. We got a Messerschmitt here, but should be able to catch up actually, considering how the Thunderbolt's turning around. That's but, true. That's true. Ooh, yep. and here he goes down. Gets yep. Kill. But what the 716 lacks in airplanes, they make up for in Flak 88, because by George, they have a lot of Flak 88. A stupid that... amount of Flak 88. That's true. That they can even get them true. in a A phase. I haven't seen it, of course, in A phase, but it's, well, it's an option. If they are want... stupidly expensive, though, aren't they? We'd be sacrificing a couple of your artillery pieces for it, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's like 140 points, 145, which, yeah, you are right, that is pretty expensive. And also slow, especially when you'll be moving up pretty fast. And they, well, as you saw, on either side really moved up too fast. Mm -hmm. And that windmill, if you see it down the bottom, it's taking a few hits from that panjar. It's actually ruined it to get blown up for a second. But it's that still standing. That is true. That still is standing. true. Oh, uh, but we are going to see that B2 has moved forward, and that guy, mm -hmm. I actually I couldn't, hadn't, couldn't quite appreciate how nice it must be to have that kind of dual-firing howitzer on there, but jeez, mm -hmm. that was beastly when you think about it. Yeah, it's it's extremely useful as a flight support unit, because that, that howitzer, if used correctly, you can knock out AT guns rather safely. It's it, it's just a nice fire support, and actually pops a ranger, so it's easy true. peasy like. Actually, just, I was going to ask no, you this question. Did yep. you see it then as the kind of German poor man's AVRE? I mean, of course, nothing can really equate yeah, quite so very, easily, but... You have a good point now. Is it, I, I'd compare it more to the poor man's Cromwell. Uh, uh -huh. The support Cromwell, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But it's slightly better, of course, because it has anti-tank capabilities, and... Yeah. It's <laughs> two, it has two bloody cannons. That's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's, true. that's pretty cool. That's true, and then the Mac Thirty One, which is kind of funny because that thing is horribly bad when you think about it. Yeah, it's just, you don't you don't buy French tanks for the machine gun tunnel. Yeah, you don't buy French tanks for the French tanks either. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be somebody out there's gonna nail me for that, but it's probably Williams. Um, yeah. Sorry, as a guy on my channel often has a quite a bone to pick with me whenever I make any kind of disparaging comment about something American. Oh. Um, but in the meantime, it does look like these Ranger assaults are slowly going to make their way down. Mm -hmm. Ooh, check out their pathing, actually. A uh, very kind of interesting pathing. Oh, that's very micro-intensive, but he, I see what he's going to do, and if it works out, that's going to be pretty fun to watch. That's true, but at the same time, look at that flak -vating. Um, So if these guys are moving around where I think they're moving around, yeah, they're going to be on the wrong side of the trees there. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a little bit hard to sell. Uh, I, They're kind of just barely on the right, but yeah, of course, that flak fell in will, once they get open, they will get knocked down. We've got some more and infantry. There we go, okay, walking. and will fire come in? Oh, not damn. quite. And, that, geez, well, lightning may not strike twice, but thunder certainly does. <laughs> um, you know that flak for Yeah, the flak for is going to see him, and he's going to pin those guys down pretty quickly. It's really a question of whether or not, though, that uh, flamethrower can come online. Nope. And nope, not going to happen. Nope. And we got some grenadiers now. I think... Are we going to see some of those Italian... Yeah, we got the Italian free troops on the field, which are pretty awesome. Point they're, me, they're where, really where are you seeing them? Uh, Southern side near the artillery. Aha! There we go. Ah, yeah, Ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. What I mean, Grenadier 2.0 is the main two advantages that I have over Grenz is two submachine guns, which makes them doubly, yes, powerful in close quarters combat, and also a Panzerfaust, which is useful for, as you guess, knocking out tanks. They're not True. quite on the level as Panzer Grenz, but they're not too far off. That definitely seems fair. And actually, with the M38, wow, okay, so the M38 was definitely, it was a German copy, and I guess, I don't want to get too much into the trivia, but right now we're not having a ton of action, so I think it's fairly safe mm -hmm. to say. And never mind, there they go, he puts a little lie on that one. So Pioneer's backed up by Freiliga, Fre 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 um, yeah, yeah. and uh, the couple of Pioneer squads will force back those Rangers again, and I think we're having a very strange armored column coming up the center line. Want to take a look oh. at that with me? So Problem Enzo the Germans? Is, yes, yeah. B2, two B2s, in fact, so... No, 35S, excuse me. Yeah, 35S, that's the Somu, and then the B2, which is... Well, at 716, you only get French tanks, so... 
This is the heaviest it's going to get for on a rise for Mr. Enzo. Actually, something oh, even more interesting though for you. I'm sorry to mm -hmm. cut you off. Take that's a look cool. over on the, on the American side. Tell me if you see anything kind of interesting. Xylophone? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. yeah. We're going to be playing some tunes, baby, in a second. <laughs> uh, do you think it's overdone, considering the kind of um, indirect fire he has on the map already? Or do you think that's definitely needed to kind of punch through with this Just... hole? More artillery, second infantry, the better. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really how it goes. It's all the mortars, all the harriers, all the xylophones, because they're all real useful. Especially for his assault coming up in the middle. If he can get them online, he can stop his Italians and pioneers from getting too far into that forest. Well, one thing I thought would be a little interesting myself, I, I do see these two tanks, and while, like you said, it's not going to be a crazy kind of armored attack, mm -hmm. um, they could really pretty much stop that xylophone cold. Any kind of damage coming their way will freak them out for a few seconds, but it's not going to be devastating, though, will it? Uh, for the light, it's... I think it'd be pretty devastating, honestly, because those, really? okay. infantry, those infantry are very, very bunched up together. And for the tanks, they could give some good fire support if they get a little bit closer. I'm thinking maybe they could push through center, but we have that AT gun in the ray. Uh -huh. I'm thinking maybe Frenzo, he could play a little bit more in that center area, in that crossroad, get a few infantry guys in there, scout out and then try to break through, yeah, it's a different thing. It does look like the Americans are slowly getting pushed back in the forest, though. Yes, mm -hmm. we still do have that Ranger Assault Squad doing the cooking. Oh, yeah. But, uh, the, the uh, Vino Roast doesn't seem to be going so quite so hot anymore. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ranger Assault's down, and... Oh! And just to the south, we see the B2 goes down to a Zook team, just kind of hiding on Oh, wow. Out. That's a good flank. And dear Very god, check out that xylophone as well. So that, that barrage mm -hmm. comes on right on out and blows apart the German position. So nobody owns the forest for the moment. And we see nope. some more Americans shoring up that attack. Wow. That was a surprising amount of power technics out of right there. And they pay for it with their lives, though. So. <laughs> Flag 88 responds in kind. What, what would Confucius say? Using a cannon to kill a mosquito? Something like that? Yeah, you can use cannons to kill mosquitoes in this game, but you got to fight against British. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, too. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Okay. Oh, actually, interestingly enough, it looks like that mm -hmm. um, 88 will have its first real target coming onto the field. And M10 is on here, and looks like a 105 howitzer as well, backing up the American position. Yep. Lots of artillery, and that's, that's exactly what you need to do. Especially against Enzo, because he can outrange Enzo's artillery. And all of Enzo's power units are those Flak 88s. They're shocked. You can easily blow them up with just... A bit of off map, oh not off map, but indirect fire. Oh, okay, but we are going into phase C very, very shortly here. Thirty-five oh, wow. seconds. This, this game has flown by, but it's not been because of the action. I will, I will I know. not it's say. Just, it's been so, so static. I mean, the seven sixteen. It's a road war one infantry division, but I think they're taking it a little bit too literally right now. That is fair. Oh, ooh, it looks like the xylophone almost takes a hit. Yep. Let's see if it actually takes the that final shot here. Uh, it's barely fallen back. Oh, jeez, okay, so the, nope. the, the rounds are falling short. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I kind of want... It, it's, you know, it's horrible, but yep. I, I like seeing stuff blow up as much as the I, I I like seeing stuff blow up, too, to be honest. That's why I watch Michael Bay movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch it for a plot. It's true. That is also true. That's why we watch Tom Cruise, Tom, yeah, Tom Cruise movies as well. Uh, it does look like we're seeing a couple of platoons of German infantry coming on forward. Practically an entire company's worth of men, when you think about it. Four oh, trucks yeah. and a Fuhrer. That's, that's quite a lot. I think it was more of the Italian guys I want to... Uh, but they're, they're in German trucks. There we go. They're not Germans. There we go. They, uh, they don't have the veteran shield over, so maybe it's probably just pioneers. Also, that's too, also possible. Yeah, it's too bad. Even from like a gameplay perspective, you can't tell what's in the vehicle. It's, it's just a little bit annoying. There's no real indicator for that. Another you know, shotgun sometimes... comes on out, by the way. Sorry to interrupt. So shotgun it's coming cool. on out. Go looking for that Flak 41. Not going to hit it, though. Pins him, but actually does zero mm -hmm. health damage. Yeah, damn. He's real lucky. If you look at the craters, it literally hit everything but him. Ooh, but that one, on the other hand, did hit Ooh. him quite well. Good hit. And those mortars, those harriers, that's exactly what its Nello needs to do. And yeah, both sides are just artillery in it up. Just trading pot shots over the forest and far away. You did say, by the way, that the 716 doesn't have a ton of air power, but at the same time, I kind of feel like that really could assist them. What kind mm -hmm. of ground attack planes do they have? I would, I, me personally, oh. I'd be trying to hit anything around this five group in the the forest here. They get a very nice uh, free times card of Messerschmitts, bombers, or rockets, which are pretty good. I mm -hmm. think you get a few. They can get J-88s later on, which are, of course very nice, and 
I think that's really about it. Maybe a Fokker Wolf Bomber too. But I, I know what you mean. The second infantry doesn't have AA, which rightfully so. There's no real plane to really worry about at the moment. But that would be a good thing for Enjo to take advantage of if he was to get some air power. I think there's more artillery maybe for Enjo to help out. He's just using the his LEFHs, which are pretty decent. But he can get access to the rains, uh, some rocket artillery. Would definitely help him cry a bit more around the Sultan out forest. Worth noting, by the way, it does look like he has a protective line of suck-ups with the Ostroop and moving on into that oh, forest. Yeah. That's, that's quite a lot of Ostroop, and I, I, I kind of recently spreads him out a little bit before he goes in, but... Yeah, just, I, I don't know, I, I'm, actually, I'm not feeling too bad about that. If you think about it, his artillery is super lucky. He accidentally hit a flamethrower uh, team that went in, that was going towards the forest. So mm -hmm. I would think that with this particular group right now, geez, he outnumbers the Americans probably, what, three or four to one? Yeah, definitely. At closer range, I will give the Americans a slight advantage because semi-automatic rifle, but... Ranger Marauder, Italian by the way, three... sorry to interrupt. Major Marauder, oh, yeah. he, yep. He doesn't oh. quite take out that uh, gentleman down to the south. Around. Indeed, that Pack 43 is going to be doing some nice little direct fire there. Yep. I would... Ooh, no, he's not. Go for the rifles. Never mind. Yeah. It's the windmill. Just... Oh, the windmill's still alive, thank God. Phew. <laughs> they they okay. know how to build them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'd be a wall crime to blow it up, to be honest, at this point. That is definitely true. Um, yeah. does look in the meantime, stovepipe and, uh, is that the 76mm? Yes, they are yeah, trading shots with Pack 43. That seems very, very strange. Oh, Rangers rushing in. They're trying to get the SMG kill. Ah, uh, that's not going to happen. They might that's be able to freak them out, but look how much German infantry is in that area. Yeah, and yeah, the machine guns are going to put them out. Amazing they're still alive. That is fair. And of course, now that they say that casting curse, um, that guy goes down to two, and there's the surrender at least. I'm not completely go. wrong, just mostly. Almost killed a pack gun, though, so it is a good effort. Still a bit, still a bit suicidal, but yeah. But go. considering he, you know, he got a couple of guys down in the first place, he's mm -hmm. got uh, recons, kind of back him on up. Yeah. Can't hate too much on it, though, can you? No, no, no you're, you're definitely correct, yeah. Five really do go down, but trading out with a couple of riflemen. Um, and actually, up on the northern side, we saw very little action for the longest time, and the Americans brought in four or five squads to really push forward there as well. Mm -hmm. Not sure I really like that particular maneuver. Um, open field, this is basically just asking for this MG34 to pin them on down, and it's going to get into the fight pretty darn quick here. Exactly, there's no, there's no fire support here to help him with this attack. You can get Shermans, you can NM7 PD, a Wolverine, artillery, or something, but with nothing to support, it's a shoot. I mean, he's just reaping what he sows right here. True, true. Yeah. And that, uh, oh my gosh, the M10 is going to get into the fight against the B2. And the B2 is going to back away. I'm not sure. He's gonna, Okay, he just got a barely out of line mm -hmm. of sight from that, with that tree. Yeah. Out of range, actually. Excuse me. Yeah, as you can guess, the Wolverine will definitely blow up the B2 easy peasy like it's end at long range. I mean, all you need is a Wolverine and a Tonello. We don't worry about tanks, which is pretty nice when fighting against 716. Now, I do yeah. just want to watch this forest battle happening here because it's just like this mass of men moving in a human way. But like you said before, a World War One division, and they're showing that with the tactics right now, trying yeah, to take this forest. I'm zoomed in right now, just looking in. Yeah, likewise, just, likewise. It's, it's just, just nutty. The bullets going in every direction, the Ostrup and going... Oh my god. Oh, he has a grenade. I saw the grenade. I was going to say, the pioneers sometimes, you overlook that particular group mm. from him. It's just it's insane. But oh my gosh, here comes... Oh, they're, they're attacks here comes. blown apart. Oh no. Yeah, it's a xylophone. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's right, don't punch up all you guys, because... But the the little he pays for it, though. ME-109 ground attack does take him out with a bomb. Oh, H-129. Hello. Oh, yes, and here comes the Hank will take out the oh. M-10. Oh, okay. I even forgot that plane was in a division. Damn, that was... A, that's some good use of air power, as you mentioned before. That's exactly what he needs to do. Take advantage of that. And that's true at this point. Like you said, the economy of the Americans is a lot higher than mm -hmm. it is for the Germans. It's got to be kind of worrisome for him. Um, and one thing I'm surprised to see... Oh, there we go. Here's a couple of uh, AA positions coming in. But I feel like this 105 howitzer has not been doing an awful lot. I feel he's even maybe a little bit out of range to do a lot. Uh, Yeah, he's a little bit out of range. He can bring up a bit closer. I mean, he could maybe just barely hit the artillery. But as you said, hardly been shooting. He's only used up 15 shots. And he's been on the and... map for like 15 minutes. Exactly. And considering that this is one of his major power units, his useful units, because it can have range of German artillery, he should be using these constantly to counter RT. Side note, by the way, side good. note, by the way, we had a big panzer attack coming up on the northern side, but one went down on the main line, and it looks mm -hmm. like the artillery is the only way the Germans are keeping their guys alive. Yep. 
Uh, I'm sorry to cut you on off. But yeah, you, anyway, ooh, yeah. wait. P47 coming in? No, P38 with the lightning. Uh, not Two sure lightnings. how else it's going to go. I mean, those are the heavy bombers, and I'm guessing he's going to blow up our artillery? Yeah, yep, there's one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's how you blow up artillery, right? Yeah. And, and pack, there yeah. goes the pack as well. So, uh, German position getting rather negative up in the northern side. Yeah, Messerschmitt does manage to get a bit of revenge, which is good for him. But are you really surprised by that? I mean, the, the P47 might be mm -hmm. able to outturn and outburn, but the, uh, the, the P38 wasn't exactly known for its dogfighting now, was it? Um, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I know we at one because it's a heavy bomber. It's it's just terribly slow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just, like, once again, Americans just need some airplanes or AA. They can get bloody Gabby, of course. They can get Gabby out, but no Gabby. No Gabby. Oh, jeez. Oh, Francis Gabreski. Oh, God, that yeah. man has a charmed life. Whenever I see him in a game, he seems to have, like, seven kills and never gets touched. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> It's a, it's a morale factor. The Panzer up north did get blown up, which is entirely too good. So that German soldier is really kind of dwindled away. Oh, I am I am kind of hoping that this middle kind of uh, tank column moves forward at some point. Mm -hmm. In fact, oh, he damn. probably could even rupture the American center if he did so. Yeah, that's that's quite a lot of sharpy runs right there. And as you, he could definitely rupture through the center, man. There's nothing to stop him. And that's just look just look at all the artillery that's trying to get blown up. There's no real protection. Well, there's the AT gun, but this artillery aren't any good. True. True, but we, we are coming up on, a, what, about 12 minutes, 11 minutes left in this replay, and yeah. it's still just been a complete wipe from the Germans over the Americans right now. 1645, mm -hmm. well, it's 1645 now, and growing, and it looks like this. There's an ME-109, and he's got himself a massive 250-kilogram bomb. Oh, he's going yeah. right for the middle of that American position. Someone's going to die. I think it's going to be AT gun. Yep. Yes, it is. Beautiful round. Beautiful, Beautiful round. Beautiful round. I'm really, honestly, quite amazed at 716 dudes running. I, I was really going to give this to the second infantry before the replay even started. But I just I just think Cacinello has been very, very passive when he could have been much more aggressive in this map, especially north, just giving up all that ground out even much of a fight. Wasn't a good idea, I think. Well, again, like we were saying, he got to mass his troops a little bit more effectively. Yeah. Um, by the same token, these these German tanks in the center weren't here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And indeed, want to take a look at them? They haven't used a single round of anything. Nope, they're just hanging around. I guess and he's going to wait for the perfect moment to attack. Imagine this for me, if you will. Okay. Uh, the force where you do see the recon troops and the rifles for the Americans. If you go and just take that clump of trees to the northern side. It could be a private kind of picket charge. Line troops up behind that forest, and then you could cut off the north. You can push through to yep. the center. I mean, I feel like there's been a lot of missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. Of course, as I say that, the Americans bring in three tanks, four tanks, two M10s and two Rhinos. Jesus, he, he, how many points have even flowed him? And that's, that's, that's another question, too. That's um, like six minutes of points. Yeah. Yeah, I can't quite understand it. Five um, minutes, yeah. And, oh, and there's there your Lorraines up in the north. I didn't even see these guys either. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the heavy artillery I was talking about. Just look at its HP power. 27. That's free off an AVRE. That's... I would not want to get hit by a Lorraine. That's true, but I kind of feel that the AVRE might be a little more accurate. Um, I mean, uh, the, the point and shoot yeah. might be a little easier to do than the kind of exactly. lofted rounds. Exactly, but you also got a kilometer extra range. That is also true. Yeah. Jeez, what these guys have? 1600? Yes. Yeah. That is a hideous vehicle, though, if I can say so myself. Yeah, it's. I, I think it was a makeshift of a uh, French designer and just decided, hey, you got these big characters hanging around, let's just plop them on top and see how it works. And as you can see, it works rather well when they actually hit. Side note, by the way, it's a nice easy way for both you as well as anybody else out there to know. If you look and find out what country of origin for the German vehicles, if it's a captured model, you can always yep. tell by the little uh, appellation at the end. So mm -hmm. if there's an F, it's a French tank. If it's a T, it's actually a Czech tank. Uh, so, um, and actually wait, British, T's oh my gosh, I can't even think what that one was going to be. Um, that actually might be a B one, I might be wrong. Wait, why would Czech be T? Ah, because in, in German, um, the Czech Republic was the Czechish Republic. Ah, okay. I didn't so, know that, huh? I thought it was... I can't really think of any other country as such of a T right now, but that makes that makes some sense, yeah. Thailand. Oh, B1. <laughs> yes, oh, oh, not again. M10 not again. goes on down, and you know what? Actually, oh, at least God. he fired at these German tanks. The German tanks do fire yeah. back. We got, we got a 47 Thunderbolt going in for the kill, so he's going to finally get some revenge. That's but... true, but this, this flak building might be able to put up some kind of cloud. No, nope. he's not going to bother. And there goes that poor Henkel. Right, right, right. 
Why isn't the flag fell in the suit? He was moving. Oh, I'm, oh. It's just why you always attack move AA. That is also why that's how you attack move anything. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's also true. Just just attack move everything. That's pro tip of the day. <laughs> oh, fun. Fort Thunderbolt did get killed by two Messerschmitt show. I didn't even see that one. Actually, I was focusing back on the fact that all these Austrian troops are actually out of MP40 ammo, which is hysterical to me because, <laughs> you know, if you oh, watch okay. a lot of German infantry, they fight mm -hmm. and they lose all their LMG ammo and then they go exactly. down. And it, it just it seems insane to think that this, this um, yeah. MP40 is actually still useful. You know, useful. Yeah, it's only well, they only got three mags and one, which isn't exactly an awful lot of ammo, but yeah, you are definitely correct. Well, and the Freiwillige are coming up behind as well. Looks mm -hmm. like these guys are trying to get in position. And this is why you use Ostruppen. Yep. Ostruppen to kind of fix in position. Then you move in your heavier troops and you take them out. Yeah, Ostruppen are pretty nice. The 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 cheap, they're spammable. You know, not, nothing amazing, but at long range, they got an MG42. So yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Rhinos in the meantime, they'll get into the fray, going after this this B2. The mm -hmm. B2 is firing back gamely, but I don't think he's gonna do anything really. Nah, I can't exactly kill it. Yes, that big pack 43. Oh, if it was to move up, could probably knock out both rhinos. And that's what's in with the comment. But he's only got one guy left. And is he moving? Yeah. Yes, he is. He's attack moving, and that is that's the pro tip right there, guys. Um, the forest is almost getting some hand-to-hand -hand combat, though. Dear God, those guys are close. Gets run. Ritz is more than enough. Will he get the second? No, nope. he does not. Romance kill run, Ritz definitely helped out quite a bit, but he's gonna need another AT gun in the bottom to really stop that soap because... Maybe maybe not. The Fusilier is still here. Yeah, the Fusilier yeah, only has 100 meter range AT weapon, Ritz is... That is range. true. That is true. For some reason, I always think the Fusiliers actually are carrying a legit anti-tank weapon, but no, it's that mm -hmm. uh, anti-tank grenade, and that's a, that's yeah, a suicide it. run. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's that magnetic one. Yeah, it's a magnetic one. It is, yep, yep. Oh. And, just okay, just freaking on out there that tank, forcing him to fall back, that 250 kilogram bomb doing its work. Mm -hmm. And um, those Messerschmitts are lovely for Enzo, because you can get them in a pack of three, which is rather unusual for playing as they, you know, use the kind of packs of two. That's true, but they have to make up for the fact that the 716th has absolutely nothing else besides that, so... <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, um I, I, I don't want to go and call this one too quickly, but it does seem fairly safe to say that it's going to be an Axis win. Yeah, it's just, see, Enzo really just had a slow plus run the entirety of the match, a slow, dwindling beatdown. Very Road War 1-esque, of course, which makes quite a lot of sense. But yeah, it's been, it's been a very, very static match card, just... No real crazy big maneuvers, there's more skirmishes. I mean, this forest has been quite a hot spot, and this southern flank, too. Well, you know, it's that location, man. It's definitely an mm -hmm. area you want to build in. Mm-hmm. And, and neither side really managed to exploit it all too much. The Americans are holding on to it, but just barely. And the Germans aren't exactly making too much progress either. They, they move a little bit down south, and they get just back, and it's back well, and forth. Well, ask yourself this. If you're the Germans, why would you? If you're holding over 50% of the map, Yep. There's absolutely no need to play an aggressive style with a defensive organization. Yeah, you're definitely correct. Yeah, definitely correct. It's just holding that plus run. I mean, up north, he hasn't even really bothered attacking the majority of the match. He's just got that little ground advantage, plopped some guys in the forest, a few machine guns here and there, called it a day. And again, the thing I find really impressive myself is that the center line, right about that middle arterial, Mm -hmm. Um, there has been absolutely no fighting there at all. Nothing. I don't think there's been literally anything outside of indirect fire arcing over the front lines. I mean, that, of course, the middle in every map is very, well, most maps is very, like, no one likes to go in the middle because you get flanked from the left and the right, which is scary when you just attack on the flanks. True. You can only get flanked from one side, especially on this map where it's very open on one side in the middle. So the person on the open side is scared to really attack over the open ground. Uh -huh. Well, the person on the left-hand side has a forest advantage is a scared attack over on the open ground because there's no real, like, next checkpoint to hold on to, next piece of cover to grab. But let's let's, let's strategize for a second. This game is going to, you know, it seems slowly enough we can kind of get a chance to do that. Yep. If you were to take that, though, wouldn't it just be better to kind of take the standard kind of, um, let's say, rupture attack, throw a couple armored vehicles, throw some infantry yep. you, you just behind and just go? Yeah, you just both sides, to be honest. Have we got exactly. those tanks moving up slowly? Are they... Are they oh, they're not going to be aggressive. They're, they're oh, staying right. back. We've got, we got the Fusilier moving up now in the middle, so we might have to get some bloodshed over here. Oh, no, actually, the German tanks are moving on up. I thought you were talking about the American ones, and I was like, oh, oh nothing no, happened in there. No. Yeah, the, the German ones are slowly moving, but not, not piercing through the middle. 
That wouldn't be the best idea right now because there are tanks on the other side rating for them. And also, like, Antonello, Antonello has a tank advantage. His, his one Sherman beats everything that Enzo can bring up, and he hasn't really taken advantage of that all too much. Is Actually, it... here's, here's one way you know it's been a very slow game. Mm -hmm. Check out uh, the munitions over here for the Germans. Uh, this Opal Blitz is almost out of ammunition. Oh, yeah, he's been... That never happens in busy. any kind of game. <laughs> very busy. Ooh. We've got mortars. I was going to say we have martyrs coming on in Marta Eins and another B2. Where are, the, where are these martyrs going, though? Oh, down uh, to the south. Okay. Smart move. Long range advantage. That's really the heaviest AP tank. Oh, Cornet tank's a bit of a... Uh, Misnomer. Yeah. <laughs> Misnomer, yeah. Tank, tank, destroyer, potato, potato. A cardboard True. box or a pack gun. True. But again, yeah. oh, was it, what's the range on that thing again? What? 1. We have 1,200 2. meters. Okay, not too bad. It, it's pretty much a mobile pack gun, and it's also cheaper than a pack 40. Um, ME 109s, by the way. Uh, yep. One's going after this Bofors, one's going after the mortar. It looks like one's going to be a lead in just to be taking fire for almost no reason whatsoever. But he will allow the other bomb to get on off, so I think it's like a prayer to take him out, and he does not. Nope. A little bit off target here. Yeah, we've got a P38 coming in to this and their return favors. I'm guessing on the uh, tanks. But if he drops long, he might actually even take out that martyr. Or exactly. one of them. I mean, those There's things Smith's are coming paper in. Paper armor. Yep. But does not manage to hit properly. And there goes a P38. I'm amazed that Anto has kept the yes, priority this match. Yeah, well, I have to think about it too. I don't think the Americans have even really brought out any kind of superiority fighter. No, it's all it's all been bombers. They had those P forty seven Thunderboats can work as fighters, the bomber versions at least, but no Gabby, no P forty seven or even I think that P thirty eight rocket run which are pretty decent fighters too. But um, yeah, just nothing really. And again, now we have four M four A one Rhino Shermans on the yep, map. Yep. Where look what they look where they all are. They're just in the middle. They're not doing anything. Not even, not even close to the front lines either. They're, nope. they're, they have to really be working to be even to be considered as combatants on this map. Would that be at seventy-six millimeters at the start of the match? Mm hmm. I think so. It's it's in the same spot, Khan. Oh jeez. He hasn't even shot. He he's been a pacifist. He, oh, he's just man. been enjoy He's been enjoying the war from a far distance. Role. Speaking... Everyone else, you know, takes a takes a thunder. So speaking as an American, man, we are anything but completely pacifist. We are occasionally pacifist, but that's only when we're not trying to, you know, give freedom to everybody. Yep, yep. Um, another martyr moving up the, the middle line here. Could he actually get a shot off? That'd be kind of fun for me. Um, he's not going to see anything, though, for quite a bit of time. And I don't think these rhinos are going to be foolish enough to charge through. Uh, although I really kind of wish they would be. This is just for something to happen. I'm, I'm really interested to see the KD ratio of this match. But I don't think it'd be entirely... Well, it might be pretty high for Enjo, because he shot down quite a few expensive planes, but... Well, actually, if you look at the forest as well, too, I mean, the forest chewed up, like, what, 70% of the infantry he's had on this map? Yep. That one yeah. tiny little area, a couple, you know, a few acres wide, really. Yeah. And then, really, the main reason that Aginello has held onto that forest for so long is because of his artillery end. His rifles are pretty decent. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of rifles. I just prefer getting as many ranges as you can and just working out from there. Ooh, there goes one of the martyrs. 76mm yep. on the south, who got brought in way late, has still got more action than the one in the north. Michael <laughs> got brought at the start of the match. But that's going to just... be a total victory over here for Enzo. Jeez, yeah. completely whitewashes the Americans on that one. Kills are... It's actually pretty standard for kills, to be honest. A thousand kill difference from both sides, that's... Not really too crazy. But look at, looking at the kills in general, so the 57mm is doing rather well, 107 uh, mortar yep. doing a decent job, rifles here and there. Yeah, not not necessarily mm -hmm. collected, but not really spread out that much either. Yeah. Germans, on the other hand, this ME109, well, he took out what? He's, a, yeah. he's, he's an ace just from this map. Oh, took yeah. Took five wow. kills. Wow. That's... Shocking. Six, six, is that six or...? Well, he's got five, he's got five um, air kills. Exactly. Oh, it's a and bazooka. A zook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Zook. Never mind. Yeah. That doesn't count as a victory, I guess. And anything, honestly, yeah. anything else other than that has 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 at best two kills. Yeah. It's oh no, sorry. Lefh. Crazy. Lefh and the IG from early on. That's it. I know. Um, Atenel managed to kill two of the range with an M10, which is pretty decent. Because, but yeah, it's been I, a constructive criticism for Atenello. He should have been much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Use this artillery batter to counter artillery the enemy positions, take advantage of the tank advantage that he has, 
and just really just just attack a bit more. Don't don't just rate around, especially in a phase. Go for that middle line. Go for the middle line, at least. I Try to push above it. Ironically, really. he did kind of mirror the whole kind of American way of fighting during the early part of World War II, which was fix the enemy position and try to pound it flat. Mm -hmm. And and I will say one thing he did do well is that he did actually use that xylophone decently well. That sounds yeah, like a he... very small thing, a small potato. Yeah. Um. But no, he bombarded the front line. He used it as a mm -hmm. big shock, and then that was it. He blew apart the German advance. He just didn't have the forces to follow it up. Exactly, and I I just think it's just been a much just much more aggressive all around because he has a very nice aggressive deck. Second infantry is a wonderful little run v one deck because. They got the artillery, got the infantry, they got everything you really need. Not as much so as the 15th Scotch, but they make up for it in more rays than others. Definitely true. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be pretty much it for me today. How about exactly. you? Any last um, words you want to add on in? Nothing really. I, I just think Enzo did a pretty good job, yo. You know, just played his deck to its fullest. Just <laughs> He played it standard. exactly to the profile of it, at least. I will say that. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. That's a pretty pretty standard 716. I'm, I'm actually happy to see 716 win because they're not the most popular deck, but they, they can be rather fun to watch just because how. I don't know, just their playstyle of artillery, big AA guns, and then big infantry rushes. Well, I kind of feel like it's very much a, a beginner deck, but maybe we'll leave that discussion for another one day. I will say oh. that Enzo definitely earned his oak leaves today, so congratulations oh. to Enzo. There we go. Yeah. And Agnello, uh, tough loss to that big guy, but, yeah. you know, you'll get there. It's it's just a learning experience. It Hopefully, is, it is. If you, if you are watching this, that's an hello. Hello, thank you very much for watching. Indeed. And just take our criticism, try to improve your game. There's, there's a lot to this game. Don't feel too intimidated. Just have fun with it. Just try different divisions. Because frankly, we're not really that great of players either. At least I'm not, I will admit. You, this other guy in the meantime. Yeah, I still, I still have quite a bit to learn about certain units. But it's just, this game's a learning experience and I'm loving it because of that. That's true. That's true. But we're starting. We're starting to run a little bit long here. So how about we call it quits for this yep. one, and folks, we will okay. see you all soon for another one v one. Okay. Take it easy. Have a great day.